Well, Martha and I lived in uh, Nevada, Missouri for a few years, and at that time I was operations supervisor for all the area McDonald's restaurants. Well, we found that uh, Fort Scott was really more convenient, more centrally located for me to drive to, like oh, I old and Chanute and all. So we considered moving over here. Martha was real hesitant about the move, but uh, once we saw this house for sale, she was sold. And so that was 28 years ago we moved here, and we've been thrilled ever since. We've had opportunities to move to other locations, but Fort Scott is our home. So we have chosen, this is it. This is what we love to do. Is that how did we end up with Scotty's Wine and Spirits? Uh, we were at a church meeting, and the president of our congregation got an assignment to Nigeria on behalf of the church. And he owned the liquor store, and he came to me after the meeting. He said, Jim, I've got my liquor store for sale. Are you interested? You know more about wine than anybody I know. And we looked into it, and we said, let's just do it. So we ended up uh, owning the store. Business. We received the Small Business of the Year Award. And would you know, I went to, I had a convention in Vegas, so Martha accepted the award on behalf of our store. And it was a real coincidence because at the same time when I was in Vegas, uh, I received the um, Outstanding Liquor Store of the Year for Kansas Award. So that was quite a shock. It was kind of neat to be recognized for what you, hard work and what you do. Thing that, it was surprising when we bought the store. The same day that we bought the store and closed on the store, I grabbed a check and I went down to the chamber and I said, I'd like to join the chamber. And Mary Lynn Stevenson was executive director and she says, well, we don't usually have people just walk in like that. Uh, who are you? And we explained who we are. And uh, it wasn't too long after that that Martha and I both, uh, I think we're the only husband and wife team that's ever been on the board at the same time. I'm not sure, but I think that's the case. Also, about it was about 20 years ago, Mary Lynn came to me and said, you know, we're doing chamber coffees, but it's our employees that are doing the coffees, and we think it really should be the members who are doing the coffees. So she said, would you consider doing a chamber coffee announcing? I said, well, sure. Well, the next thing I know, out is she publishes a notice saying that I am, for the next year, I'm in charge of the chamber coffees. So I announced them for a year, and that meant not only announcing them, but it was scheduling them, arranging them, uh, calling people up and say, you know, tomorrow is your coffee and it takes an hour for a pot of coffee to make, so be sure and start early enough, all those things. So uh, I'm proud of that fact that we were uh, we were active from the chamber right from the beginning. And as a result of the store, we also started the uh, Forks and Corks, a taste of Fort Scott, and that was what, 11 years ago. And uh, I think that's proven to be one of our major fundraisers annually. And it's a lot of fun. I said, well, you know, it's uh, fun and raising money at the same time. So we're very proud of what we've accomplished with the chamber. Uh, the head of the volunteer tourism for about 15 years, uh, because I believe that Fort Scott, a good industry, is the tourism industry because it's a clean industry. And it doesn't... Um, costs the city a lot of money, but it garners the city a lot of money. And I was uh, on the board when we raised the transit guest tax the first time, and I was also on the board when we bought a new trolley. And I'm proud of the work that I've done for tourism. Um, I, I, whenever we go anyplace, it, any ideas I can bring back. I try, and the table tents that we do at restaurants, we found in Osceola, Iowa at a Mexican restaurant and we came and brought that back to the chamber probably five years ago I think and it's a good fundraiser for the chamber plus it also creates uh, revenue for the chamber and lets our uh, tourists know what's going on later in the month. She's involved in so many things I would go like what what tonight and she usually has something going on but uh... You started the garden tour. The secret garden tour. Secret gar you and Pat Lyons did right. the secret garden tour. They started that. And uh, Moonlight I, and Mistletoe for the HBA. We started that. I started that. And we were very active. We, I'm semi, what you got, I guess you call it semi retired from Rotary now, but for, I did uh, 19 Oktoberfest. I, I 
shared. And I also did uh, 10 spaghetti feeds, shared that over the years. And I'm very proud to say that I'm the only recipient of an award that there are only 50 given out to our district. And I'm the only one in the history of our Fort Scott Club that received the uh, Avenues of Service Citation Award. So I'm very proud of that. We looked at the fort. We often feel like there's not enough support of the fort. We said the reason Fort Scott is here is because of that fort. And so uh, we got together with Reed Hartford and we started the Friends of the Fort. Uh, in support, it's able to do things that the fort can't do, for example, advertising. So we raise money and we do advertising for the fort for events coming up that they can't, they can't do as uh, federals, federal people can't do. So we got involved in that. And then uh, three years ago, Ann Emerson came to me with a picture in the paper of a bunch of flags and saying, isn't this nice? They're doing the flags in honor of the, of the fallen veterans. And I said, well, let's just do it. And so our only rule was we want one flag for each lost veteran in the Middle East and that they all be made in America. And so we were able to do that starting three years ago uh, nearly 7,000 flags. We had, sadly, we had each year uh, more flags. Uh, the first year the governor came and was part of our opening ceremony. That was very nice. And we've done it three years now. We do it on the week of 9-11. It's sort of a memory, some, something to remember. Uh, the relationship between the city and the chamber is wonderful. And I have to give credit to Lindsay and Heather for working as a partnership. And Dave at the city does uh, a fabulous job. He does a wonderful job. And, uh, and, the, and the board of directors, or the city commissioners, I should say, um, they're, for, they're positive about Fort Scott. And I'm not, I, I guess I can say that it hasn't always been the case, but it sure is right now. And, and I think uh, we've got a great town with uh, people pushing in. You have to remember that nothing happens till somebody makes it happen. And especially in a small town, nothing happens until someone has an idea and they have to have more than an idea, they have to follow up with it because lots of people have ideas and they walk away. Fort Scott has people who are aggressive and get involved and get in the middle of things. And having come from another small town, Nevada, it's easy to compare to realize how lucky we are to have a town with this many active people. And our friends tend to be those people who are the most involved in the community.